I'm sorry about that. I was trying to get on and my laptop just wouldn't let me on for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Hakochi, tried... We're going to go ahead and push it out live. So I will just provide a brief introduction. Otto, I'll okay. give you the cue and then we will begin. We're going to go up to seven since we're starting late. Okay, that's fine. Oh, Hakoshi ne. That Camille Kadish. Camille, she bought me. Oh, uh, get in there and you should be five seconds away. And you guys are live on Facebook. Go ahead, Yeah, it's eight, nine. Um, Kodo, Nikinash. Oh, do you have a sheet of aging? Nikinash and that kitty that's a chisha to the Anshla adults as a son of a bushes chin. Just ark here, I need a shadow to the Shkijni Ada Chanel. I don't say say auntie, I don't know in a sha. I do shachine, my deskijni, a dash chin though. Look at the net, eh, the banana, do the king's nanigi in lay. Do you be toward that? Are there, oh, eh, naga? A co, quodo, eh, a belaganic etcher, the nest stories and teachings night, could ego, a cold yego, eh, but nay, a quacky old cut has angi. A coco, de egg at quacky, um, Chanel, but the snow with oak ever the snow. I don't she thought she yarded a co, eh, de equado, other la. Yen his Ishana Edo Lins Beniaqua Agil Ad. Resiliency through the Nell Life Way teachings, a co quot ego, a um, a jigi belaganic etcher. A cushy a be a the neck at Yahadolne, Ado a belaganic etcher sto. Ado a here to all those participants who are joining us via Zoom, via Facebook. You can um, Definitely type your questions into the Facebook Live in the comments, or you can also do the, um, and if you are on the Zoom, you can do it through the Zoom chat as well. So um, this evening we have our our guest, uh, Shanelle, as what I, you know, I call him, Mr. Lyle Mahajan Harvey, and he is going to present to us this evening. So I'm gonna hand it over to him. At yeah, eh. Good evening, and um, um, say ya but a ninch. I do not cry the nebus chain. Kill the chain, it does a chain, cut less than it does another. Out a ya de hons and all this. Um, Shadini, some masanado, some mado, other in the Aishazani, do her sweet and linigi. A hot a ya, um. The Babachan be Toho Legend, a RDHSK, that's between Rock Point and Rough Rock. A hot a ya a um, I did not nash a dot. I do in the aim, this china da a ya a is it not a liash a dot. My name is Lyle Jerry Bahojona Harvey. A hot a is it? I do a shinshama, a hot a is it shaila. A ado in the a ya. Um, <clears throat> today, as of today, a 43 years old, Although I've been in education for about 22 years at the most. And, um, and I've owned my own company, Bahazona Consulting, for about seven years now. And um, it's been something that I've been wanting to do for a long time in my life, um, something to... Um, give back to um, the people that mentored me and then um, showed me how to identify myself with not only the world, but the environment. I don't 
Uh, that's what my grandmother said. She told me, she said, you're going to identify yourself as a young man from um, this place called Sheep Manure Springs, Arizona, which is between Rock Point and Rough Rock. And she said, that's where your foundation is. And um, in Navajo, the Nebizad, a lot of our grandmothers, they would say, ah, the and uh, it's very, I'm very fortunate to have heard my grandmother and and my aunts and then my my grandmother's sister and my grandmother's brother and have heard the way that they talk in their language, the Nebizan. Meaning that they um these people that I mentioned they they illuminated uh, a way of leadership that um they not only talked about but they actually lived it in front of me their their whole life and I've seen them um have livestock, corn, squash, watermelon. And I've, I've seen them have a home. I've seen them have a chaha'o. I've seen them have a ceremonial hogan. And then I've seen them carry this lifestyle, a very disciplined lifestyle. And I've seen them do that in front of me. And then above all, I heard them talk the language in its purest form with no English, just and I heard them do that in front of me. And um, I carry that with me to this day. And today I, I use that. And I and I think through those lens, I guess you could say that. And um, I think through those lens and I listen through those lens. And then I look at things through those lens. And then I smell and taste through that. What I mean by that is that in my life today, wherever I go, I go and I, um, I'm always talking about them, meaning my elders, my parents, the way that they do things in front of me, the way that they uh, inspire me to be a consultant today, an educator today, and then um, to be a, a person with um, values, a person with um, goals, and a person with um, leadership that helps me in, in my own capacity, in my home, and then in, with my animals, with um, my corn, and then with uh, with the consulting firm that I have today. And um, I give back all of that back to them. And they're the ones who instill those values in me and made me capable of looking at myself and identifying what I need to do in my life to, to become successful. And so that word is very interesting. The word successful, you know, and today we identify success as maybe having a million dollars or driving a Porsche or, you know, a Cadillac and um, having a three-story home. And, and um, but the way that these people inspired and influenced and motivated me, I learned over the years that Success in, in its purest form is what we call So if you look at that word, it's, it's, it doesn't have a complex meaning. It, it talks about the way that you value your yourself first, your name, your clans, where you come from, your parents, your grandparents, and then the people that inspired you along the way within your, your extended relatives, within your community, within the Hogan, at the sheep corral, at the horse corral, these people that laid the fundamentals for you. When you think about them and what they talked about, it defines that word success for you. 
and it defines the word success where it fits your needs as a person. And leadership. And when I think about leadership, and then and then this this word life inna, and how do you define that? And where do you fit in with the world, your community, um, your professional capacity, and then your self-image and the way you look at yourself and these are the things I learn through my language. And then contemplating, rationalizing, sorting, and thinking about some of the things that my grandmother talked about, my grandfather talked about, my mom talked about, my dad talked about, and then my paternal grandfather, and then my paternal grandmother. And then some of the people that influenced me with, um, with clean, with the be, with bekashi, with na da, with uh, eshiyan da neskana, with um, weaving, and I think that's one of the main things that I really took to heart today, is the way my grandmother used um, this comb here, and what it meant to her, and the way that she used this to, to um, formulate. Um, her own success, meaning that she used this and she really took that to heart and she used it to feed her kids. She used it to buy groceries. She used it, she used it to pay for the bills that were needed to sustain her home. And it was a reality factor for her. It was real. And so in that sense, this is real to her. And this formulated all her goals and her leadership and the way that she approached life. And, and then it was a form of tackling and handling and balancing stress in life. So when she sat at her loom and when she put this in her hand like this, and when she moved this weaving comb across that loom and um, it did something for her that a lot of us today, we, we're, we're searching for, we're looking for that word uh, peace. And how do we, you know, formulate peace in our life to where we have that balance of um, calming ourselves down, handling stress, dealing with peer pressure, um, dealing with what's going on right now, this pandemic this COVID-19, yeah, all those things. And this was how that she, she, she tackled that, she handled that. And this was her, her getaway. This was her kind of like, you know, some people go to Jamaica, Hawaii to get away from reality, but this was hers and she used this. And then stemming from this was stories, songs, prayers, and then another um, life teachings, life way teachings. And so I've seen her do that with this comb, not this comb in particular, but this weaving comb. And my grandfather, he's the one who um, who made that comb for her. So today, A, we have this one. A, we value that little Apple button right there. And then um, this phone here, we value that. And this one, I guess you could say is the equivalent of this. So in my world, in my life, I've seen the value of both sides. I've seen the value of this weaving comb. I guess I can say it in Navajo. Ado nite hastuido sani shetezine shazani dan linigi i nasunafi edagi ladi. Nana, when I graduated from high school, that was when this came about. We began to value this and we use this today. And that's what I'm using right now. So I have my um, my Samsung, which I'm on. And then I have my, my business phone. And then I have my personal phone. And so, so today we value and then we built values and we built goals and leadership utilizing today's technology. And so back then it was this. So a lot of times we talk about bilingual education. So 
what is bilingual education? And to me personally, I can't define what bilingual education is and define that for a general understanding, but I can only share what I understand. I can only share what, how it influences and motivates me. Everybody's understanding is going to be different when they hear their grandmother talk, when they hear their grandfather, when they hear their uncles, their aunts. But what, what does it stir in your mind? What does it invigorate? What does it, you know, what does it tell you? How does it guide you? How does it, you know, how does it, um, I guess, wake up? certain senses in your mind so to me i always use this example right here and i've actually seen this life and today i live this life as well but i combine them today and i utilize both of them in, in my understanding that's me if you were to ask somebody else what is life what is teachings when you so if you were to ask someone and bring somebody else in here and have them they're going to define these things very differently why because we're all uniquely made we're all unique in our own capacity we were made and designed that way my grandfather um his name was Bahujana. he told me that he said he said, the question the next So when you look at a weaving comb, you look at all these fingers. And then if you look at different weaving combs, some have 13 fingers, some have 11 fingers, some have nine, seven, five, three. And he said, that's what these represent right here. Meaning that we all think differently. We have different leadership styles. We have different leadership um, like goals. We have different leadership, um, I guess, etiquettes. We have different leadership forms and we have different you know, ways of going about leadership within our homes. And so within our homes, we have what we call clans. And my grandfather explained that to me he said, we all thought the same. He said, then we wouldn't need clans. He said, the reason why everybody is different, the reason why everybody understands things, life, education, different, it has to be that way, he said, because he said, so the way he explained it, he said that when changing woman, when she when she was done creating all the animals and birds and the different things on this earth, she left and she went home. She went back to her home and she took some air with her, different air, and she took that with her. And while she was over there, she um, began to create um, this an idea. And her sons, Nayet and Zgan and Tobajitina, began to miss her. When you leave your home, when you're 16, 17, 18, you begin to go off and venture off. Somewhere in your adventure, somewhere in your endeavor, somewhere out there, way out there, somewhere in Boston, Phoenix, you know, Baltimore, you know, Atlanta, New York City. Seattle, wherever you're at, whatever have you, you begin to miss that smell of your mother's cooking. Maybe you begin to miss that that tone, that voice of your mother's voice, you know. I wonder what my mother is cooking right now. You think about home again. And then you think about the way your grandmother, her tone, her voice, the way she prays, the way she talks. Then you then you begin to think about home environment, and then you begin to think about your the smell and that touch when you touch your mother, when you touch your father, when you touch you know your grandmother, and then when you 
touch their clothes, the way that it feels, and that that all that's emotions right there. And and when you feel that way, you want to go home and you want you, you so sometimes we feel like, man, I really want to eat some mutton, a chinese and but really you're thinking about your mother and your father and your grandmother and your grandfather because that's what you were raised with. You know, that experiential, those senses that you had, that you have in your body, it begins to tell you, you need to go home. So then you want to go home. So you, you end up going home and and we go home and we 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 see our mother again, we see our father again. And um that that love, that's what love is. You wanna you yearn for that, you know, your mother's voice, your father's voice, the way that the home is, the way that the pillows smell. The way that the kitchen smells, the way that you know, the way you feel when you enter your mother's home, the way that you feel when you um, when you talk to your father at the horse curl, at the sheep curl, So you know, just the different senses in us. It begins to awaken these and re-thrive them, reinvigorate them, and there's healing through that. So that's what happened to them. These two young men, and they be, they asked about their mother, and they said, where did she go? So they asked their grandfather, and he told them, he said, this is where they went. So a long story right there, winter story, but I just wanted to use that as an example to clarify and to um, show what love is that sometimes, you know, we, we, we miss our, our, our mother and our grandmother, and sometimes they're not here on earth anymore. And so we feel that and we, we miss them. And then sometimes we'll use, you know, even tears. We'll, 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 we'll call somebody, we'll text somebody. And then we'll say, And so you think about these things. So changing woman knew that that's what was going to happen. So she planted that emotional factor for them. And so eventually they they made it to their mother's home. And when that happened, she had created these uh, clans and um, she prepared a nice basket. It's a long story. But, but in, in, in short, in summary, she gave them a basket and there was corn in there. And each corn represented a direction. And these were to take the form of clans. So with those clans, she identified that each clan was going to have its characteristics. Each clan was going to have their own leadership. Each clan was going to have their own tobacco, their own corn, their own way of talking to their kids, their own way of setting goals, their own way of uh, cooking, their own way of planting, not that, their own pipe, their own form of family value. So therefore, she gave this corn to them and they returned back to the earth. And um, when they got back, then eventually over time, these uh, four Clans, they took the shape and form of the clans we know today. You know, Kenya, Ani, Tohane, Todich, Eni, Ado, but Ani, Ekoja, Hashkishnita, Eado, E, 
these characteristics and personalities and understanding and not kendo sadhizindo, they took these forms of these different clans. And how many clans do we have today out there? When you think about it and you think about it like that, and uh, my grandfather, he, he once told me that his name was Eddie Benali. He said that. And he said, our, our clans don't think the same. These different clans, they, they, because changing Mormon made it that way. She knew that we, we had to be different, that there had to be different interpretations, different understanding, different ceremonies, different songs. Even one song, when you think about one song, just begin to, every clan has their own way of singing it. One story, clans, by the clan, they tell it different. So that's the way I understand what we call personality. And Eben Hodet, through changing woman, she's the one who identified and said that there's gonna be different ways of understanding things. So that goes back to these clans. So sometimes you have to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself, <laughs> When you say that, it's, it's a powerful word. It means a lot of things. It identifies you, who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and then where you're going in life. You know, when you ask yourself, and then, it identifies and it makes you stand up like a corn. It makes you realize, it gives you that realization and actualization of who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and then your goals and leadership in life. And then how you orientate those. And then how you identify with that. And then how you take all those values and how you approach people with it. So, from your clan. Each clan has those different values. So for me, that's how I identify with it. So every time I hold a comb like this, it, let me show you something. Hold on. I brought my, um, I brought a bag here. This was my, my grandmother, my mother's mom. This was her, her batten bag, weaving bag, her, her where she keeps all her batten. In there, I uh, I can reach in there. And when you know your foundation, when you know your values, and when you know these the answer to these four questions, who am I, where do I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? It's very powerful. And then other people can contest it. And then people can say that to you. When you're, when you're doing something good in your life, when you're doing something right, my grandfather always used to say that. You know you're doing something good in life. You know you're headed in the right direction when people mock you and when they oppose you. And then when they say, ah, because you actually have something like this that was passed down from generation to generation. This, this comb right here, my grandfather made this for my grandmother when they were very young. And then this one, this batten here, was given to my grandmother by my grandfather. And then my grandma had an aunt that, that a long time ago, three generations, four generations back. And today I take these out and I can 
I can smell it, I can feel it, I can touch it. And I know that my grandparents and then their parents are right here in my hands. I hold on to it and then I, I hold them. And that's how I gain my strength. And the same with stories, the same with songs, the same with prayers. So before you get even into teachings, before you get into saying that you kind of have to identify the foundation of all of that. What is that foundation that, that allows you to think in that capacity of like so you kind of had to go back and then go back to the roots and the roots is is your clan and sometimes some people say my father's not around anymore my mother's not around but when you think about it in a, in a the net philosophical way in a in that sense, they're right there with you. They're in your hands right there. They were imprinted into your hands. These lines here, these fingers, they all represent these, these elders that, that taught you something, that gave you that thinking capacity. Meaning the capacity and the ability to think about some of these things. It starts at the home. It starts right there from your mother, your father, your grandma, your grandfather, and then the animals too. Even a dog, even a, a, a cat, even a sheep, horses, cows. It makes you think. It gives you that the capacity to think about things. They didn't have table saw back then. They didn't have sander. But so you ponder about those things. You think about those things. You start to value it. D, I can do this. If my grandfather can do this, if he has that creative talent in him, I can do it. Shi, that word right there. When you formulate that word by thinking about the foundation, the pillars of who you are, that's your plans, your grandmother, your grandfather, when you think about it like that, then there is no more doubt. There's no confusion. You can openly and freely say, Shh, a Lyle Harvey, Ginishia, but Ahni Nish, no Kay did never bash his chain, Kit the Cheney does it, Che, Tratness Zahni does another. So you formulate that foundation of what positive self-esteem, that positive self-projection, positive, I guess, um, affirmation, positive motivation, positive resiliency. And you begin to formulate that, but you have to identify who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and where you're going through your clans, through what your mother and your father, your grandfather, what they did in front of you, and then how they lived in front of you. And if you don't have that, if you don't have that kind of an infrastructure, that kind of those um, values, some people, you know, um, don't have that. That's what they tell me. And then that's where you start to reach out to your extended relatives, your your clan relatives. That's where you reach into books. You start researching, you know, the long walk. How are people survived Kit Carson? How are people survived, you know, 
anarchy, assimilation. What made our elders come this far? One of my grandmas would always say that. He said, oh, you know, kind of like that, you kind of have to think like that and think. So that right there, then you begin that search. So one of my grandfathers, his name is uh, James W. Begay from Rock Point. He, he told me that one time. And he said, when you start searching for things and when you start looking for things in your life, and you're really in search of these values and these things, he said. He said, e o e e e de, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna start looking for your identity. You're gonna start looking for a career, maybe school, maybe a job. When you start looking for these things, e a do e ya e as de that's what he said, and he said that that's what that means is that these people one time they were sitting around and they didn't know how to get good things in life. They were sitting there and they were talking to the coyote and the coyote, they asked the coyote, they said, there's that cougar over there. And um, why does he have a um, lot of good things in his home? <laughs> Maybe he knows witchcraft. Maybe there's something that he's not sharing. And go over there, go check on him. Maybe you can find out something. We're gonna um, strategize our life. He went over there and he um he 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 maybe knocked on the door and walked in and what's those it's not and I guess he went in there and he asked him his roundabout questions and finally he got to the point he said those people over there they're very interested in your success. And he said, what do you do? Why are you so successful? What is it? How come you always have good meat? We're always struggling. We're always having a hard time. Where there's sickness that comes upon us, he said. What, what is it? He said, what, what, what do you have? Do you have like special prayers? Do you have a special bow and arrow? What 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 can we do? What can you tell us? And he said, we have poverty. We're spiritually impoverished. We're mentally impoverished. We're emotionally impoverished. We're physically impoverished. We. And so meaning that we're we became incapable of, of surviving. We need something. We don't know. Our children don't listen to us anymore. There's sickness, there's there's a plague going around. There's maybe like a virus going around. There's something going around and it's killing us and it's taking all of our things, all of our belongings. It's even taking our elders and our children and we don't know what to do. We don't know how to think. We don't know. There's no clarity. There's no, nobody has the answer. We, we're just, you know, we're clueless and um, it hurts us and we, we need to know what to do. We, we need something. Maybe you can help us. Is there something that you know about? Is there something that you can tell us that will motivate us? Maybe. Maybe we're doing something wrong. All these questions, they're brainstorming. And he's telling this, this cougar, he said, what do we do? We have this sickness that came upon us too. We, we, we don't know. It's killing us. And it's... And, 
we can't eat no more. And, you know, we're, we're, we have this illness, we have ailments, we have, you know. And um, so that cougar sat there and he, he was just sitting there and he didn't know how to answer that, 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 that coyote. And he just, uh, ah, oh, but he did not send you, ah, so he said, oh, hold on, hey, did not send, hold on, hey, I don't know, he said, I don't know what to tell you, I don't know how to, um, I don't know how to um, give you an answer. And then he said, even if I told you, he said, um, he said, you won't respect it, you will not respect it for me. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he he said, he said, he said, he said, he he said, he when you give you something good and you tell you how to do something good, you don't have no values to respect it and really take care of it. You don't, you don't take that, you don't have appreciation. And why would I tell you the, the key, the secret to overcoming and planting something good for yourself in life? Why would I share that with you? You, you know, you, you, you're not going to live by it. And of course, you're going to just use it to get ahead. You're just going to use it to be better than your fellow man, than somebody. I don't want it to be used like that. I have all the right answers, I know the right way, and that kind of talk. It will yell a just like you know everything, you're better than people around you. That cougar said that. And he said, That's what you're gonna do with this if I give it to you. It's very simple, he said. Oh yeah, one so good. He said. And then that coyote threw himself over and kind of made a big old deal about it, got dramatic, and he said, Well, you know. Well, if you're not gonna tell us too, then well, I guess we're just all gonna die, you know. Like, oh, she been there. They got the knees. So the chin, but the la. So do na is la so was ago. So they don't know how to the la. You know, he threw a fit. You know, sometimes we we tell somebody the truth about something. You know, even our own. You know, in, in our own home, and people take it out of proportion. They kind of exaggerate on it and. It's very hard to tell the truth sometimes about certain things. And so, you know, this coyote, this cougar knew that. He was doing that. And then that's when that, um, that cougar, hold on really quick. You know, they are not in that phone, but I see none of the light that none of the Let me plug it in. So that's what happened to um, that cougar and that coyote. And they, um, and they started to argue. And finally, the coyote said, well, he said, let me make a deal with you, he said. He said, if I promise that we're going to use this right, if I promise that we're not going to abuse and exploit this information that you give me, I'll make sure that these people, they use this information in, in, a, in a positive manner and that they're going to um, they're gonna get somewhere in life with it. What the fuck? Let me make a bargain, a deal with you. And he said, I'll make that deal with you, he said. And 
and it's it'll be on your terms you know what do you want me to do how do you want me to carry out this task and i promise i promise i promise he said i'm gonna make sure that these people use this and uh, the coyote the cougar was laying there and now uh, you know and then finally the, the cougar said okay he said well well, if you're going to put it like that, he said, you know, sometimes your elder will say that to you. Sometimes your uncle, your aunt, maybe your grandfather will say that to you. But no, those are words of like, they use it to temper you to make you kind of like reverse psychology, like question yourself and look at yourself in the mirror and think, am I really capable? Am I capable of um, success? Am I capable of doing something with myself in life? Oh, yeah, Jenny, I can do it. I can handle it. Your home, your life, your goals, like there's a process, he said. In order to complete that, and in order to have like to have balance, happiness, peace, and joy, he said. There's one thing that that triggers all of that, he said. Hey, are you ready? Oh, 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 come on, she might. Oh, 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 be got not. Oh, oh, oh. He said, This is a shako de It's so easy, but it's so hard. And it's kind of like how life is, yeah. Ah, she sees a conde, yeah. People make a big deal out of something really small. And that's how it is sometimes. Sometimes, you know, the, to get something and to do something in life, it, it's a matter of something this small, but we make it complicated. We make it overwhelming. And then we, 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 we turn it around and it becomes a stressor. So this cougar knew that. He said, and he went like this. He said, and this is my grandfather's story. James W. Begay. And I don't really, um, I don't really um, cite these medicine men and some of these elders that I have, I don't always um, paraphrase them. I don't always mention their names. And, you know, in Western education, it, it, it encourages that. But a lot of times, some of these old folks, some of these medicine men, they, they, don't, they never say acknowledge me. They don't say cite me. And they don't say, it's not she you know, they don't say that. And uh, meaning they, they want to be left alone. They don't live on, you know, this um, somebody citing them. They don't live, they don't, they don't get their confidence from that. They don't have to be cited. They they'd rather be left behind the curtain. They don't want to be put out there and question. When you do say that to them, to them they'll say, That's the way I understand it. Yeah, they don't put themselves out there in the public and kind of like it was it was really hard for me to do this knowing that I was going to be on live Facebook you know I have talked in different places but for me to 
you know, but if it's for the kids, and I know that, you know, I have a good relationship with Pinyon Unified School District. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, I was confident enough to do this, but share a little story. And, you know, so this cougar knew all these things. So he said, okay, he said, he said, he said, Anybody ever heard hear their grandfathers say that? Your uncles say that? They'll say, A kolan hasne. And what does that mean when they say that? When they say, And then he said that. He said, like that influences my senses, that influences what I see, that influences how I smell, that kind of defines and orientates, projects my reality. He said, this morning star, that Milky Way, these stars, this morning time, early twilight, early dawn twilight, these influence me, they motivate me, and they allow me to get whatever I want in life. And then they take care of me. That early dawn twilight, that spirit, that wind, that air, the color of that air, it, it's my shield. It protects me. It keeps this viruses, this cancer, diabetes, these, these foreign ailments, it keeps them away from me. And he said, that's all it takes, he said. So that's what he told that coyote. And he said, that's, that's, that's what's going to activate that for you. That success you're looking for. Success can also mean healing, direction in life, like the ability to identify yourself, say shit, and then formulate a path that's going to get you somewhere in life. And then I heard a, a, a video today uh, about this woman and and um, she has she's a billionaire and um, she she had a um, she had a, I'm trying to remember the name it's a it's a spine condition on her spinal cord but she she said it she said I had to I had to give up my life in order to enjoy my money and so she said that. This spinal cord, this this surgery that I was going to have, there was no guarantee that it was going to be successful. But for me, I had to ask myself, is it worth that if it does work, I'm going to enjoy my life and this money that I have in the bank account? But then there's always the possibility that it's going to kill me and that that's, I'm going to cease to exist. And where is my money going to go? So she said, I had to look at myself in the mirror and ask myself, 
who are you? <laughs> and it, right there, it clicked in my head. And I said, hey, right there. She, she knew, she knows that. And she had to ask herself that. And she said, do you have it in you to do this? And nothing, she said she had that surgery. And and that's an old word, right? Some people still use that. She survived. And she was on the news and the podcast. She was talking about it. And she said, I survived. Now, she said, I'm healthy. And she said, that's so successful. So in that sense, you know, success can be healing as well. And she said, now that my physical being is successful, I can enjoy my success that is yet to come to me. So in our prayers, it's the same way in our language. We say, And it's right there. And we have that in our language, the Nen language. It has these positive spiritual affirmations in it that allow us to overcome. So what made us overcome and what made us endure and be victorious to what assimilation did, to what, you know, Kit Carson did, to what these Spaniards did, to what society did to us, to what colonialism did to us, you know, what, what, what allowed us to overcome that, what allowed us to endure and prevail is our Diné language. And because that Diné language ties into our strength, it ties into our healing, our self-healing. It ties into how we understand your first clan, your second clan, your third clan, and your fourth clan, and how that makes you think about your parents, your grandparents, the lifestyle, like Manali said, the life ways. And then, how they did it and what they used to come this far to bring us their grandchildren their great-grandchildren this far in life and is activated through our Dene language so that's what this cougar told this coyote and he said what does that mean? Meaning that you're going to acquire a long, prosperous, healthy life. That, you know, you'll never see the inside of a hospital. You'll never have to take metformin. You'll never have to, you know, endure certain things that comes with with you know sickness with COVID-19 with you know these things um heart disease but it has to be you on the end a lot of people say that yeah that comes from that Meaning that they know who you are, they know your name, they know your clan, because you pray, you talk to that energy, you talk to them, and they grant you that healing, that prosperity. And that's the power of Hayoshka. And that's the power of being up early in the morning. It motivates your mind. It motivates your spiritual being, your mental being, your emotional being, your social being, your psychological being, your physical being. And these different words that explains all these different components and layers of your metaphysical being, your 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 psychological being, the different layers that make you who you are as a person, 
they activate that strength in you. They activate that endurance in you. And that's life too. You know, you tell somebody something in your life, maybe a friend, maybe you're somebody, and there's always going to be somebody that's going to mock you. Like I was saying earlier, there's always going to be somebody that's going to challenge and oppose what you have to say and then say, wah, that kind of talk. And that that that's what you know that's how society is. But my grandfather told me, he said, those are challenges, those are things that's going to, I guess, let me put it this way, structure your character. And where does your character come from? Your character stems and derives from everything that you put in yourself from one year, zero, one birth, all the way to that moment in life when you decide that you're going to leave your mother's home. <laughs> All these people, they all have something valuable to contribute to your success in life. In my life, that's how I, I interpret it personally. And mind you that that translation and that the way that you understand is a personal and individual process. And that's how we were designed and made as Dene people. We were designed to interpret and then we were designed to understand at different levels and different rates and different you know uh, i guess and in different tiers you know and as the net people that's who we are and that's the way our education system was formulated and it all derives from your clans your clans it tells you that you represent four different homes you represent your mother's clan, that home, that fire, that food, that water, that prayer, and then that song. That's one. And then your father's side, Hajjah, that home, that teaching, those values, those prayers, those songs, that food, that water, that leadership. That's two. And then number three, that bloodline, that home, that fire, that water, that food, those songs, those prayers, those values, those teachings, those understandings, that language that's used in their home, the different languages that are used in that home, the different goals that are encouraged in that home, the independent interdependent, intradependent communication skills in that home, that bloodline, that's three. And then number four, that bloodline again, the same thing. All those elements that make that clan unique and special, you represent those four different homes. That, that's kind of like your composition the pillars of who you are, your personality, your motivation, your your character, your leadership, your goal setting skills, your communication skills. And so you got to look back at that tree, at that, you know, at that, at that, at that, at that, at that sequence of, you know, thought. That's what they are, those clans. So that's that's what I understand, and that's how I go, and that's what I use in my company. 
and that's how I approach youth, and that's how I approach young parents, and I approach it through what I learn in life, and um, there's a lot of good teachings out there. I listen to them. I'm open-minded to them. I listen to them. They make sense, but if I never lived it, if I never utilized any of it, if I never experienced it, I, 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 I'll acknowledge it, but I don't really utilize it until it's something that I personally saw, smelt, tasted, heard, and felt, and had in my hand. And that's how I approach the youth. And when I approach them like that and tell them that this is how I understand it, and this is what I learned from this mistake, this mistake, this mistake, and they really grasp that really fast because they know that I'm honest to them. They know that I'm not, I'm not lying to them. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be perfect to them. I'm sharing something that's personal to me. And it's really interesting when you go about, you know, education that way. And that education is from one years old to the day you decide to leave your home an accumulation of experiences, an accumulation of mental, emotional, spiritual experiences that kind of really defines who you are, where you come from, why you're here, and where you're headed in life. And then, case. It makes you think. It makes you... So that's what this comb represents. That's what my grandfather told me. And he told me that this comb, these fingers, it represents in Sahakis, your thinking skills, the way that you think about things, the way that you, um, I guess you can say constructively sort, the way that you constructively um, place things in your life of value. And he said, that's what, that it was put in your hands. And so that's how I understand that leadership, success, and then, um, education stemming from the home and then from there when you establish that part to where you can say shit and then it's a song too yeah like that you know so when you can think about yourself like that that you're a spiritual being that, you know, you're not just nobody. You're not just somebody, but you're really something of value. You're a spiritual being that you were created in a spiritual sense, that you were in your mother's womb for nine months. Why? Why were you in there for nine months? Every week, every day that you were in your mother's womb, you were, you were being created. Something was being activated. Some cell, some atom, something somewhere in your body was being activated. It was being, I guess, like, like taking a phone, right? And then installing apps on it. Downloaded, that's a layer. All these apps make your phone a very powerful thing. Those of you that are on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and, and when we download these things on a phone, it gives us the ability to become very effective community builders. You go out into the community and, you know, it allows your voice to travel that much further. An extension of you, who you are as a person, who, what you understand, then you share that. And I think that's very important in a home is when parents and when grandparents and older brothers and older sisters can share their experiences in their life to the younger generation and, and tell and share with them that like you know you can hurt yourself through this through those experiences not mistakes yeah but experiences 
one thing that um, really, um, before I go into sheep corral, horse corral, and other elements of home-based teaching, but one of the things I learned as an educator is that I, um, I was at um, Little Singer School one time, and I was doing a project over there, and Kindergartner Shishyahat is Ade. Ah, she Ade Shishyahat. And then the teachers told me, and then the principal told me, they said, these, these ones right here. Ah, she beta delta. Don't say that. Eh, a teacher, eh, hata, chha, she did no. Ah, she don't say that. Eh, that they're the rowdy bunch, she did no. And we want you to talk to them for us, she did no. Ado a. So I sat in there with them and we um we were we were talking and then the teachers they left and uh I have a picture of it. I shared it one time on my Facebook page. And they were looking at me and I got scared of them. <laughs> I got intimidated by these kindergartners. They were looking at me. And and for the first time in my life, I was really intimidated by something. And I looked at them and they were looking at me and their ears were open, their eyes were open. And for some reason, they had this value that they wanted to hear something from me. And they were just looking at me. And there was like a two minute gap and I didn't know what to what to say. <laughs> I didn't know how to open up and break the ice. And I sat there and they were looking at me and, and I was like, yeah, I got hot and I was trying to, you know, uh, and I was looking at them. Then I and then before I could say anything, I didn't even say yat eh, I didn't introduce myself, I didn't. I was just sitting there and I was looking at them. And then I just said, I looked at them and I said, right there. And they were just looking at me. And they looked at me and they just put their pencils down, whatever they had. And they look at you with shirt and they the and they stop and they just put everything down and they listen to me. And then right there, I just started singing. And then I said, I said, and they stop and they just listen to me. And as I was singing the song, about halfway through the song, they started humming along. They were humming along and they were just, and as I was singing, I heard them humming along and placing that effort, that, I guess, participation in there. And Hashishila. It, it did something, it moved me. And I had to finish the song. And as I was singing the song, by three quarters of the way of the song, they were singing along with me. And they, they were just... It, it, it moved me. And I, I finished the song. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I got done with the song and they were looking at me. And, and then one of the little girls said, I heard that song, said And then another one jumped up and she said, I heard it too. And then one of the boys, these are kindergartners. And then the little boy, I'll always remember him. I have a picture of him on my Facebook. And he jumped up and he said, I heard that at my sister's kinalta. 
and it amazed me. They were having an active conversation about that song. And they said, Mr. Harvey, you should sing that song again. We want to learn it. We want to learn that song. And we want to um we want to learn that song. Is that okay? And um and I said, of course. I said, yeah. I said, you know, and I said, I I have to get permission first. I said, oh, I don't know if I'm supposed to be singing songs to you guys. And um, so a uh, but what I saw that day, and eventually um I got permission from the principal, and then um they started to learn that song. And they learned to where I could start the song and they basically finished the song. And then they learned a mountain song as well. I have it recorded on my phone. And um, they learned the song. It activated different parts of their brain. It activated different parts of the brain to where they started asking questions. And they started asking questions about real world understanding. That's what I call it when I'm building curriculum is real world relevancy. Yeah. What does that mean? How do you create relevancy in a class and you know to 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 children? And by doing that to them, they um they were able to distinguish between what is valuable to them, not in that classroom, but in life, in what was valuable to them and what, what, what meant something. And then pretty soon they started talking about their grandmother, their aunts, who knows that song. I'd even give them homework and they went home and they started coming back and they said, I asked my uncle if he knows that song. I asked my my mom if he doesn't know, if she knows that song. I asked. I wanted to go to a, a Kinazda, so I told my dad, let's go. And uh, we went over there and guess what, Mr. Harvey? I learned, I, I heard that song over there. Uh, no, and that was really amazing. So uh, what I'm saying is that you know songs of any nature, songs and even Native American church songs as they've been the hagabi game, do koje, do koje, two step songs, the social songs, and they really make a difference in in a home environment when you want to activate this uh, a ch a child's learning capacity. And it can activate parts of their brain to where they they learn to ask questions, they learn to initiate, and then they learn to correspond with you, you know, and that that's through songs. And so as when I was a child, when I was a kid, he had a really big black horse and he became it the sada. Mr. Harvey. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to let you know that there was a 15 minute, 15 minute oh. warning. <laughs> yeah. Otto, I released the poll that the, the people are, the participants in Zoom can do. Oh, but go okay. ahead and you can, um, um, if anybody has any questions or if you want to finish up your last thoughts, um, then we can open for questions as well. I'm sorry, oh, your name, what's that? <laughs> oh, that's okay. Let's uh, see, just the whole screen turned white over here. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, before I, I didn't even really get to um, the horse corral, the sheep corral, wool, that process. There is that process of my grandpa called it the history. And um, the way I understand it, and the way that um, I have, I had a grandmother. Her name was Lucy Gray here. And like I said, I don't usually quote people, but you know, in this case, I wanted to quote these two people because um, 
that 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 woman there, Shama, she was a very um she was a very important person in in the makeup of my identity. She um she shared some stories with us, you know. And she wasn't a uh, medicine woman. She wasn't a nine night chanter. She wasn't the hojons na ashkastande, but she had stories. And today, you know, I see that sometimes. I see people saying, and but when it comes to education for our children, for them to understand and value their cultural language, traditions, heritage, you know, it it it, it goes back to I call it um life, real world understanding. And everybody has a story. Everybody has stories. And some of them use songs. Some of them use prayers. Some of them use sheep. Some of them use horses to, to I guess you could say, massage that in so that children can understand, you know, life, inna, success, auto in the kujige, identity, their identity as a person, auto in the kujige. Education, what is education? You know, stemming from a home, stemming from you know, and they're very powerful, I guess you can say, um, curriculum tools, and they're very powerful, um, rubrics, and they're very powerful, um, you know, um, reflections. That 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 are embedded in those um, powerful tools. So, this woman um, Lucy Gray here, she um, she she always used to um, tell us when we were kids, and she used to tell us um, Ne the Bebachan, Saint Bachan, Bekashi, Bachan, Ado B ne meaning like the sounds that they make. A B in Jagado Hospaho Zeno. A yon see is case, though a yona is sha, though Ado the Ebic is the king. Lay the Bebachan just shen go. Lay when said case we get the Sahota Shinto Hajota, Juno da Hishinda, Nesto da Hajota, Doda Hita Dunet Nanta. This is old school teaching, ya. This is the old school way of thinking. On such case, we get the Sada Shang, Ah, Konya, the Shinsa, the Dojota, a Hista had net the say. Did the Babbit Chan, Timbit Chan, Chino, eh? Did the Dojo Hishinda, Nesha Hashin. So in short, it would be like, how much... Do we let our kids go out into the cold weather, into the hot weather, without telling them? You know, and is that healthy to tell you know kids that that you know that something's going to happen to them if they're in the cold, freezing weather or during the hot? But my these. Elders, these people said, One key word right here is, So, you know, these are some of the things that, you know, that, that, that kind of like uh, exhibit like what home based teachings, where they derive from. A, that's the foundational essence. To my understanding, this is me right here. In my life, in 
bansız kesto beyaz ki ahut a e ya e ba hun izin like i said everybody's life journey is going to be different out of everybody's interpretation and translation and leadership is different but you know so auto in after you formulate that that i guess you could call it a um a a a a a, a structure of your identity then you can go into like actual i guess valuable lessons at home like hawana hasta hulzan ado penda na atado hamado hazab kanjil wado to yo just was the do ha ke again jagad and things like that then that's in the home then the sheep corral the horse corral ado koje e ya e hadla to bizdel neta those things then they start to kind of create but the foundational element of all that is you have to formulate this identity part to where they value their identity they value the language they value the stories and then they value their personality you can tell somebody that they're beautiful every day but if that's not the way they think of themselves you're kind of like wasting your time almost to say you know but if this person kind of has a sense that nishoniye dolo nishonita the neyat ein sanayat ein nizo ata alo kolobe bas kojinet do nizo bas chinind it it connects it connects in their subconscious being it connects in their conscious being and they're capable of internalizing it and moving forward with a lot of these valuable life lessons just kind of like an overview and you know it's like um of what um yourself your identity how you um like how you can enhance your understanding of you, yourself as a person and that's number one e o yela na tas ke aski nishle out of the you know and that's that that first part e o yela na tas ke aski nishle then you're going to move into na tas to at eden what does that mean so there's all these children 102 kids and they all come with values they all come with all these different morals teachings and through my interpretation the way i understand them is that they represent the different layers of identity and personality and character that you carry with you in your life so I hope I'll be hushed next door this and um I hope it is another. Oh yeah, it's another. It's not only just on his life. It's not only that. Oh, I don't know. Um, do but it's not just that. Oh, that's a weird. It's not only I don't know. It's just that in that. Oh, I don't dig dig it out in a hole. Ah, I don't. I see nothing. None at all. So now I don't care. Oh, you have the opportunity to ask questions. Um. If you want, those of you who are on Zoom, you can ask through the Zoom box. I mean, chat box, Zoom box. We still have the poll open. If you haven't taken the poll, please take the poll. We really would appreciate your feedback. Type it in the chat box. Um, I'm not sure, um, Camille, if, if there's anybody on Facebook Live. No questions yet on Facebook. How question? Yeah. I just want to say that I'm sorry for being late. <laughs> <laughs> Dead laptop. 
Indeed, chong da zi laptop. Uh, One time, what's the they ASU the law department that when they stand there, oh, it's a U200, don't ask. Quite auditorium, ah, uh, quite laptops are on at the auto, quite. Legends, you know, has kiddo, quite. So that I got under the officer. As it from this, says, though, as it all, do, do, do. Oh, so I have just one comment from one of the participants. Um, that was very interesting. Thank you very much. From my family, we're all gathered around as a family and we listen. Johnny. Yeah. Oh. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Valencia, there is a question. It says, what does Ahmarebik Ahajon really mean? Ooh. Hmm. <clears throat> So, uh, no, baby, Kahazon, Jano, Koshi, a ya. I'm going to quote uh, a person here that um, his name was um, Edward Nabahi Harvey. And um, he fixed that um, gish for the new college. If you go to the sixth floor, there's a gish up there that has turkey feathers tied to it. And um, and he, say, he told me, he said, um, a long time ago, he said, when you wanted something in life, he said, hey, yeah, hey, you know, hakish, hello. and we asked him, we said, why? Why do you need a kiss? And then he said, what the hey, she she not need Ah, the he said, she not at the he said, John, the. When she made these plans, she gave each plan a gish, a planting stick. And in your life, he said, you have to make a, a, a um, he said, oh, he said, you have to make a goal. You had to set a goal for yourself, a realistic goal. And then in order to understand that goal, everything that I talked about earlier, you have to define those goals. And how do you define those goals is you have to understand that on your left side of your body is your male. And then on the right side of your body, you're female. Meaning that your brain, you have a left brain and a right brain, that you have to balance the way that you think about things through that male and female duality. Like, like you balance your decision, your choices, and the way that you rationalize and interpret and think about things, that you're male and female in one body, that you represent four different homes in your body. That means that there is male thinking and female thinking embedded in your brain. And that gives you that love, that anger, that peace, that joy, and then the ability to think and the ability to survive and then the ability to learn and then the ability to unlearn. So right there, and if you listen carefully, in education, we learn things every day. That's sa'ahna I guess you could say it like that. I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying this is the definite translation. 
but I want to explain it to where it makes sense. It's relevant. So when you learn things every day, that's almost like it's a male like progression. And then through that learning, when you learn something in life, you internalize it. And then you rationalize it. And then you filter it through your mind, through your senses. Through that understanding and enlightenment, you begin to look at yourself clearly and you tell yourself, I need to unlearn some things about myself that are toxic, unhealthy, and that doesn't give me anything, that doesn't give me peace, joy, happiness, and love, and these things. So learning and unlearning things, there's that balance. When you learn to think about things like that, my grandfather said, he called it, he called it, so in order to have peace in your life, he said, you have to learn and unlearn things. And that's how you balance your mind, your mental being, your spiritual being, your emotional being, your social being, your psychological being, and then your physical being. And then you can say, See, you make that proclamation, you make that affirmation that your balance and your male, mental, emotional, physical being, and then your balance in your female, mental, emotional, and physical being. That's balance. That's just one way of looking at it. You can't. I guess maybe there's somebody out there that can do that. In my years on this earth, I'm not capable of answering it in that sense, but I can answer it according to how I see it through education and then through listening to songs, singing songs, praying, and then following some of my grandfathers and then listening to my grandfather, Edward Bahi Harvey, my grandfather, Bahajana, my grandpa, Eddie Benali, my grandpa, James W. Begay, my grandpa, Herbert Harvey, watching and hearing them pray and sing so that's how it, you know, formulated an interpretation for me. So that's the best explanation I can do on that part. Adolf, um, I, we have another question. Um, I'm not really too sure, but let me, let me try my best. <laughs> you were talking about the two men and lady. The last part you were talking about, why do you say, no, no, this kid. Mm, I, I don't understand the question. Oh, uh, okay. Um, why do you say? You were talking about the two men, men and lady. The last part you were talking about. Why do you say? Uh, oh, um, maybe you can ask her to re rephrase the question. <laughs> Why do I say? Hmm. Oh. So we'll, we'll give this person maybe uh, a couple more seconds and then we'll see. Okay. See, I see. I don't know. The vice is get all for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think she's asking for clarification on in English terms the way she wrote it corn man and woman. Joshi, if you okay, like the corn men and women don't know how to write it in Navajo. Oh, <clears throat> um, the Nataska is key, don't not dance to it. It oh, that was the ice, no. Well, I can, um, what I can say about that is like, uh, when you look at corn. He explained it at the ending. Oh, uh, when you look at corn, there's a, there's a male corn and then there's a female corn. And um, philosophically and in, in our songs, it says, it talks about white corn boy and yellow corn girl. And in there, it talks about the male being and the female being. And then I was using that um, context to describe like the male and then the female understanding and ability to comprehend ourself as a human being, the male and the female. And so we usually use white corn boy and yellow corn girl to describe that. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Camille, do you see any more on Facebook Live? Nothing at this time. Okay. Hakushina, I don't hear that. No, no, Shinala. Technical difficulties. Ah, ko hot eight la ko. Um, hahoshi e na na dole. E she e na she na desh link do. I don't hear that. Di ni dole. Oh, you e hane egi ni zala. Senegido on lay, um, other lad, not as twitter by young tea or the jo ade or a nantinigi, nasi lettigi eight. Ado bade his each janet and named e eight quite given. Not hit not hinson. A call cojit she a toddle lay, ado here, codon, hinas, not as kiddigi, do codon, a hanet and linigi with egg on hitch it as anigi. But he, but he, she knows him. I don't hear her. Okay. The next, the, um, the next Dinesh stories night, let me share this real quick, is um, October 29th. And tentatively, I have um, Mr. Atson, Robert Atson, who is going to talk about Native American church as they've been the the history and the use of the paraphernalia. Asian, <laughs> 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 